Even from a quarter of a million miles out in space, its gravitational pull can still affect our planet. It is suggested that the moon can trigger volcanoes, but geologist James Birkeland argues that it has a far more destructive role. He believes that the moon triggers earthquakes, quakes that kill many thousands of people. Nineteen ninety four, and Birkeland travels to Peru to witness that rare moment when the sun and moon perfectly line up, creating a solar eclipse. In Peru, a large earthquake is called a terremoto, and we saw this great eclipse. And the Peruvian guide said, I am so glad you were able to see our eclipse. We in Peru have a tradition. We watch the eclipse and then we wait for the earthquake. This ancient Peruvian belief that solar eclipses are involved with triggering terremoto, or earthquakes, supports something Birkeland has been investigating for the past three decades. They know, have known what I've known for 50 years almost, that the uh, lining up of the sun, moon, and earth often can trigger quakes. The Earth's crust is made up of seven tectonic plates that bump and grind against each other creating a series of fault lines. At these points, the opposing plates scrape against each other, sometimes slipping or pushing upwards. This sudden movement causes earthquakes. Birkeland thinks that the relative position of the moon and sun above these fault lines is critical in the triggering of earthquakes. Uh, when I saw the ocean tides Due to the passage of the moon, um, then it occurred to me that perhaps it might loosen up the fault lines and sort of lubricate the faults and make them easier to slip. He monitors the location of the sun and the moon during the lunar cycle as they pass over these danger zones. He also factors in how close the moon is to Earth, since the moon's orbit isn't a perfect circle, it's elliptical. The nearest point of the moon's orbit is called perigee, and its furthest is called apogee. At perigee, the moon's pull on the Earth is 20% stronger than at apogee. Now, the Earth is here, and uh, the moon travels around the Earth in a very elliptical orbit. It's exaggerated here, but uh, when it's at its near point, a, we call a perigee, um, it's only about 221,000 miles away from the Earth. When the moon is close, its effect on our tides is far greater than it is over here at the far point, at apogee, 253,000 miles away, just two weeks later. By combining all this information, Birkeland calculates how much pressure the moon is putting on certain fault lines around the world as it passes overhead. He suggests that a new moon at perigee can actually cause unstable fault lines to slip. His technique has allowed him to predict several earthquakes in the past decade. But his theories are controversial. In 1989, Birkeland was suspended from his job as county geologist for Santa Clara, California, until he promised to stop making predictions that caused mass panic. Other scientists doubt that there is a link between the moon and earthquakes, but Birkeland claims that some of his predictions have proved to be correct. October 1989. Birkeland warns the city of San Francisco that a big quake is about to strike. A few days after his alert, during the World Series, Birkeland's tragic prediction comes true. When the World Series quake hit, I was on the seventh floor of the county building. When, boom, the P wave hit. And for two seconds, I was elated. I got my quake! 
and then I didn't want any part of it because I was being rocked back and forth. I held onto the counter. It was frightening. The 6.9 magnitude quake causes $6 billion of damage and claims 63 lives. It's the biggest earthquake to hit San Francisco in 80 years. Predicting a six and a half to seven for the Bay Area when we hadn't had such a quake since 1906 quake is, is a pretty good call. Birkeland's ideas are radical, and the exact nature of the moon's influence on earthquakes is not well understood. However, in 2004, Birkeland predicts that a huge earthquake will occur around the time of the full moon just after Christmas. The earthquake that triggers the Indian Ocean tsunami duly occurs on December 26, 2004, at a full moon. In 2005, Birkeland predicts a 7.0 earthquake, and within weeks of his prediction, a 7.6 magnitude earthquake hits Pakistan just after a solar eclipse over the country. Could this be a demonstration of the moon influencing our planet? Even though that influence is waning. Today, the moon and sun appear exactly the same size in the sky, meaning that the moon covers the sun during a solar eclipse. But let's look into the distant future. Half a billion years from now, and the moon is so far from Earth that eclipses are a thing of the past. Less than two billion years hence. With the moon no longer holding the Earth on its axis, the planet rocks back and forth. The weather goes wild, and life on Earth is threatened. Billions of years into the future, the moon reaches the end of its journey away from the Earth. Its orbit stabilizes. In five billion years, the sun expands as it nears the end of its life. The Earth and moon, so inextricably linked in life, are together in death, engulfed side by side by the awesome heat of our dying sun.